Welcome to the home office in the JF17 Thunder and today we will be talking about the C802 man in the middle missile. Now I must say from the get go that I see only limited value in this missile as you have to terminally guide it in all three modes. There is no fire and forget function to this cruise missile. Now, this is of course very useful if you want to engage and destroy a specific target, but it is far more trouble than it's worth. For most engagements, I would recommend using the glide bombs uh, if you uh, are to destroy a specific target, because they will allow you more uh, independence of movement. However, you're not here to hear me complain about this missile. You're here to hear me talk about how to use it most efficiently. First of all, the missile requires you to carry a data link pod. A standard loadout uh, can comprise of the two missiles, uh, two uh, missiles for self-defense, and then a targeting pod and a jamming pod. This gives you the maximum amount of uh, in versatility in using the missile in at least two of the modes. However, the mode I will teach today, because it is frankly the simplest to use, is the coordinates mode, COO that is uh, very similar to how you treat the pre-planned glide bombs. So what you learn from the glide bombs is also applicable here. But let's get started. We'll head into the F10 map. And right here we have uh, on the island of Greater Tump two enemy transport planes. Uh, so we are going to place a pre-planned point here, PP1. And if we want to, we can also place down a route point if we are going to launch the missile from further away. But we're not going to. So the pre-planned point 1 is here. Uh, I'm also going to set up an alternate uh, pre-planned point here. And this will allow us to, to fly the missile to one of these locations and then guide the missile in towards the target on the greater tomb. So once we have marked those on the F-10 map, we simply turn to the ground crew and ask them to update the DTC. So the marks Copy. on the F-10 map DTC now. are included and added onto the DTC coverage. DTC update complete. Splendid! With the DTC coverage updated, uh, we can begin starting up the aircraft. Now, as usual, I want to remind you that the aircraft doesn't need to be shut down for the DTC to be updated. All you have to do is stand on the ground and have the canopy open. That's it. So, once airborne, the most important thing to remember about this missile is that it is essentially on a tether to your data link pod and this will control how you are flying. So we will double check that everything is armed, that it is powered on. The mode will be uh, the coordinates mode to PP36 and we will put it on a medium cruise altitude with a pop-up. Then we will switch our active screen to the right one and we will go to the pod, we will go to mill, we'll go to M1, and we will launch the missile. We are currently waiting for missile telemetry here in the screen, and as you can see, it is currently heading on heading 035, similar to our own heading. We are just gonna turn a little bit so that we are also on heading 13. Once the missile has reached uh, the pre-planned point, the video will activate and we will have 
more capability to guide it on the terminal trajectory. Like I said, it is at this stage most important for you to make sure that you are controlling it. So, yes, we can now assume manual control of the missile. So that is what we are going to do. We are gonna use very, very slow maneuvers here. And we are going to try and lock it in towards the tarmac where we do know that the transport planes are currently on. So we have locked in the missile's course for the tarmac. And we are ready to make final adjustments if need be. Now, if such final adjustments are necessary, you will notice that we're still flying behind the missile in order to guide it. And at this point, we have locked it in. Either because we flew out of the control radius, which is the most likely thing, uh, or that the missile has decided to lock in. But we managed to get the missile close enough to neutralize the target or so, I hope. It would be very... Well, that's also a thing that can happen, obviously. Well, if the pole hadn't been there, I'm fairly certain that would have been an impact. As you can see, even with the terminal guidance, you can't really plan for everything. Uh, but this is, at any rate, a clear demonstration of how you can use the C-802 missile in the pre-planned coordinates mode. And like I said, this is the easier way to do it. But all parts of the missile do require you to use the terminal guidance, meaning that when the missile has reached the designated point, you will assume direct control, and you will... Uh, you, it, like I said, the missile has very limited applications, but I'm, I would be lying if I said it wasn't fun to use. But it's also very frustrating to you. So I hope this tutorial has helped you. And But I'm going to sum it off. Just a little bit of a too long didn't watch thing. Um, you have to fly behind the missile so you can guide it. You, have the mi you will let the missile fly to the pre-planned point and assume control once it reaches that pre-planned point. And you will be have to be prepared to... Uh, guide the missile in as quickly as you can because you might lose control of it at any point. And I say any point. Also, uh, you can imagine how that attack would have went if that island had had, had a, any sort of air defenses. So there's that. And this has been the tutorial on the C-802 missile. I wish you luck with it and to be honest don't expect to have to ever use it in any of my campaigns, because I don't want to do the testing involved. <laughs>